It's so exciting watching my life unfurl at a time when geeks like me can change the world. There's a hackathon tonight, and if it works out alright, I can improve society. Oh yeah, improve society. But if you see the me there with money in his wallet, if I bitch him like a boss, I could get funding for my project. Seven figure summer, I'll be crushing everyone at the hackathon tonight. At the hackathon tonight. The price is up for grabs if I can get paid. I'm going six months old, you know I need to upgrade. I can surely win some gadgets if I sweet talk with the judges at the hackathon tonight. At the hackathon tonight. Now the rebel's on the table and I'm ready to go. I've got Sublime 5 open on my MacBook Pro. I'll type it 20 words a minute. I'm really gonna kill it at the hackathon tonight. At the hackathon tonight. The buzz is gone, we're on the way, my chance to shine has come. The cable mess around me shows I'm hacking number one. The framework that I'm using's not an alpha yet. I'm coding on the bleeding edge, we're starting to regret. Just to set up the environment has taken so much time. The clock is ticking down, I have written a single line. The Wi-Fi's cutting out, I've got a dying battery. I got conflict after conflict in my Git repository. The deadline is approaching and there's still a bunch of men, but my code is obfuscated. Will this nightmare never end? My time ran out and I had to stop. Instead of showing a demo, I used Photoshop. <laughs> I tried to change society, but it wasn't to be. At the hackathon tonight, oh yeah, the hackathon tonight. Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, so if you haven't already, uh, signed up for any Hacktoberfest, uh, open source contributions, uh, challenges. There's a lot going on for Hacktoberfest, which runs till the end of the month. Um, so I would uh, uh, recommend you all check out DigitalOcean's Hacktoberfest and sign up, win some cool swag. So thank you all so much for coming uh, to our IBM and Sib Solutions Enable Flawless Logistics with IBM Code Engine Series. So today uh, we have Sib Solutions here. Um, they're gonna tell you all about uh, their company, uh, how they're utilizing IBM Cloud's Code Engine in their solutions, some of the challenges they faced and how they're utilizing Code Engine to, to work through those challenges. Um, tomorrow we will get hands-on with Sib Solutions and work a bit with Kafka code engine. Uh, we're going to create a cool um, live video stream application. So feel free to uh, uh, join back where you joined today. If, if you're joining from Crowdcast and you look at the top of your screen, it says session one of two. One of two. Um, so you can join back here tomorrow. The second session will be at the same uh, same space that you're in today. If you're um, joining us from any of the social platforms. Uh, on any of our IBM developer socials on YouTube or Twitch or Twitter, Facebook, um, we will be live streaming the hands-on workshop portion of our series tomorrow, same time, uh, same place. So feel free to uh, uh, join from whatever social platforms you're comfortable joining from. So uh, all of the slides will be available. I will have uh, both slides from the first session as well as the second session in the same slide deck. So as long as you have this link to the slides, which if you're joining in Crowdcast, it's at the top of the chat, um, you will be able to uh, 
you will be able to have access to everything we go over today and share with you. So again, this is being live stream recorded on Crowdcast. Um, you can always access the recorded session later at any point in time at crowdcast.io forward slash e forward slash IBM dash CE dash SIB forward slash one. Uh, if you would like to get started with Code Engine, <clears throat> deploy sample applications quickly and easily, um, you can do that uh, uh, as well as signing up for a cloud account um, so you can get hands on with Code Engine and our uh, live streaming application tomorrow that we're going to play around with. You can do that at ibm.biz forward slash CE dash SIB dash one dash cloud. Um, if you would like to check out some more cool tutorials and sample applications, you can do that at the Code Engine repository at github.com forward slash IBM forward slash Code Engine. So there's a lot of cool sample applications and tutorials there, and we're always working on adding more for you all. So to get started, uh, we're going to do some quick introductions for all of you. Uh, if you would like to share in the chat as well, feel free. Uh, your name and pronouns, what title and company you're with, or maybe which program you're currently studying with, um, where you're joining from, or maybe where you're from, um, something you love, and a quirk, something that's uniquely weird or different about you. Um, so I will go first. Uh, my name is Jenna. My pronouns are she, her. I'm a cloud developer advocate at IBM. I am originally from and currently joining from Detroit, Michigan. Um, I, I'm currently with the New York City team, although we've merged into one uh, big North America blob uh, since COVID. Um, something I love are um, my dogs. I have three Yorkies. Um, luckily it's early enough. They're being quiet. They're probably napping. Um, and, uh, uh, I guess, a, a a fun thing, um, they, uh, act a lot like cats sometimes. I've, my, I had, a, I had another, a fourth one and, um, I was told all the time that she acted just like a cat, never had a cat. So I'm not sure, but, um, they get as close to, or on top of my computer and keyboard as possible. So, uh, a lot of times they're closing and opening things that they shouldn't be. Um, so that's a little bit about me. I want to pass things over to our speaker from Sib Solutions so they can introduce their, themselves for you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Sverre Valgesundan, and I'm the CTO at Sib Solutions. And, well, uh, I am very much a nerd, uh, I would say. So. Uh, uh, all programming and then uh, of course music as well sadly i didn't write that song that we heard in the beginning but i loved it uh so it was inspiring i have to make one too of course uh and uh, differently from jenna then i have actual cats which uh, happily throw me out of presentations when i'm having them so if i disappear you will know what happened and i will just be back a second later <laughs> that was that thank you thank you so much and we're going to hear from him a little later. Um, I'm going to get you all started and then we're going to pass over to, uh, to we're going to pass over um, so they can tell us a lot more about Sib Solutions and how they're uh, utilizing Code Engine uh, to solve logistics solutions. So, um, oh, there was a slide. So, uh, especially with it being Hacktoberfest, um, one thing I always like to pair with any uh, events and workshops I do are uh, badges. So IBM has hundreds and hundreds of um, different cloud badges that you can earn uh, and they're completely free. So it's not like one of those things where you complete that you complete uh, a course and you have to pay for a certification. Everything's completely free. These are a handful of the badges that I have. Um, I'm trying to bake, break the, uh, the, the 20 badge mark this year. Um, I really enjoy getting hands on with things. It's the only way that I learn, I learn, um, and have anything stick. So there's some here in the slides. So feel free to check them out. 
And there's a lot more in addition to this as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So our agenda for today, uh, we are going to take a look at and talk about um, what is a container. We're going to cover container images, container registries. We're going to then cover what is serverless, uh, what is Code Engine, and how, how are these things related. We're going to talk about Code Engine applications and batch jobs. And then I'm going to pass things back over to Sub Solutions so that they can talk to you about their startup and their logistics solutions that they've created and that they provide for their, uh, uh, their clients. And then we're going to do a little bit more of a deep dive in, in, in deep dive into Code Engine and Sub Solutions and answer some questions about challenges in, in the logistics space currently today. Okay, so to start, we're going to start with the containers. So um, there are some poll questions. If you look at the bottom of the screen where it says polls, I want to make sure you can see them all. There we go. Um, they should be visible to you. So if you click on polls, there's a few questions there. Uh, what languages do you use most on a day-to-day -day basis? How much do you know about containers? And then have you ever ordered something and received something completely different? So go ahead and answer those questions while I'm uh, giving us a high-level overview to any of those that aren't already familiar. Um, so an image to go along with when we're talking about containers. So a container is just a standard unit of software, packages up uh, the code and all of its dependencies so that an application can run quickly and reliably uh, between different computing environments. Um, so the containers are available on both Linux and Windows-based applications, uh, Mac operating system. Um, and it's just containerized software will always run the same regardless of the underlying infrastructure. So the reason it's able to do that, if you look in the uh, uh, images we have here, containers isolate software from its environment to ensure that it's working the same. Um, despite any differences. Uh, for instance, if, you're, if you are, are working at an enterprise level company or, or a startup, uh, any differences, for instance, between develop and, development and staging. So if that's a container, then what are we talking about when we're talking about container images? Oops. There we go. Um, so a container image is a lightweight, standalone, executable package of software. It, it has uh, everything that it needs to run an application that includes the code, the runtime, the system tools, system libraries, and settings. Now, you might be saying, didn't you just say the same thing when we were talking about what containers are? Uh, yes. So the main takeaway here is uh, that container images that we see here actually become containers at runtime. So for instance, if you are using um, uh, Docker images, uh, storing your Docker images in Docker Hub, for instance, those Docker images will become containers when you run them, for instance, um, on, uh, on Code Engine. Um, oops. So what is a container registry? Um, not, uh, sorry, just one second. Sorry about that. I have a dongle, a dongle not performing properly. Okay, where were we? So when we're talking about container registries, <clears throat> we're talking about repositories to store uh, all of our container images. Um, so for example, uh, Docker Hub, um, IBM Container Registry, ICR, um, Red Hat's Quay. These are all examples of uh, 
container registries that store container images. So you're gonna need somewhere to save and access uh, your container images as you create them. Um, and you can store your images and share them through a process of uploading to or, or pushing and downloading from or pulling. So in addition to container images, <clears throat> registries also store API paths and access control parameters. And if you're not familiar, uh, API stands for Application Programming Interface. Two types of registries are public and private. Um, public registries are great for individuals or small teams that want to get up and running with their registry as quickly as possible. So if you're going to be working with images uh, while you're building projects to contribute to open source during Hacktoberfest, a public registry would be a great option for you. And private registries provide a way to um, incorporate security and privacy into enterprise container image stored, storage, uh, whether you host it remotely or on-prem. And private registries excuse me, often come with advanced security features and technical support, with a, a great example being um, Red Hat's Quay that I mentioned. So finally, what is serverless and how does this... Uh, how does this come together with uh, everything else we're talking about today in Code Engine? So, serverless is a cloud execution model that enables a simpler, more cost effective way to build and operate cloud native applications. Um, so, it offloads all the responsibility for common infrastructure management tasks like scaling, scale, scheduling, patching, and provisioning to cloud providers and tools, and it allows engineers to focus their time and effort on the business logic specific to their applications or process. Okay. <clears throat> um, so uh, serverless uh, does not mean no servers. So uh, for one, the really great thing about serverless is that it allows developers to be developers and focus on their code and not worry about the underlying infrastructure. Um, however, uh, if you're asking yourself, well, serverless, are there servers actually involved in serverless computing? Um, uh, there are definitely servers in serverless computing. The term serverless is uh, describing um, the customer's experience of serverless, I'm sorry, of servers. So the customer's experience or your, your experience as a developer, uh, your experience of servers using a serverless uh, uh, model, they're essentially invisible to you. They're under the hood. So because you don't have to see them or manage them or interact with them in any type of way, that's why uh, it's referred to as serverless. So now that we know a little bit about what's going on with serverless and containers, um, what is Code Engine? So, and how, how do these things all come together? So Code Engine is a fully managed serverless platform that runs your containerized workloads. This includes web applications, microservices, event-driven functions, and, and even batch jobs. Um, so Code, Code Engine can also build container images for you from your source code. Uh, using Code Engine's source to image feature. So if you're not comfortable or familiar with containers and container images, or you just don't have the time, all you need to do, you, you have your uh, source code stored in GitHub or GitLab or any type of um, uh, uh, Git repository. Um, all you need to do is tell Code Engine where your code is uh, located, and it will actually build a container image for you and deploy it to Code Engine. Um, so, what is IBM Cloud Code Engine? So, uh, as I mentioned, it's a um, it's a fully managed serverless platform. Uh, so, Code Engine is actually a, um, uh, a platform as a service offering. Uh, for serverless from IBM, it will host any of your containerized workloads in the cloud in seconds. As I mentioned, web applications, mic microservices, functions, batch, job, batch jobs. It will auto scale up and down and even to zero when it's idle and it's not re receiving any incoming HTTP requests. Um, 
in that it's serverless, it hides all of the infrastructure uh, under the hood for you. So it will manage, scale, secure clusters and networks for you without you having to um, uh, worry or even know that it's doing it. Um, it will build container images from source code. And this is, uh, it will create container images regardless of where they're coming from. So you can use public and private repositories and registries. It's integrated into IBM Cloud and all of IBM Cloud services. Um, it's built on open source software like Kubernetes, Knative, Istio, and Tecton. So it keeps your workloads really portable, and you pay only for uh, pay only for what you use. So if you're not receiving any request incoming requests to your application, you're not paying um, for provisioning anything to keep your app running. Your app will scale down to zero, and once you get traffic, uh, it will uh, cold start to scale up to um, receive any incoming traffic. So the last part I want to touch on here is code engine apps and batch jobs. So it's important to understand a little bit about the types of workloads that code engine supports. Um, and code engine supports two types of workloads, applications and batch jobs. So Applications, we're talking about um, applications, we're talking about any workloads that typically respond to incoming messages, whether those messages are API calls, web page requests, events, or any other HTTP request. Applications process those images. Um, Code Engine will then scale your applications based on the amount of incoming traffic to meet the demand. Uh, likewise, it will scale your application back down when there's a reduction in traffic, uh, as, as I mentioned, to down to zero. Um, this means that you only pay when your application is actually running and nothing when it's scaled to zero. So we're talking about batch jobs. Batch jobs are slightly different from applications in that they do not typically respond to incoming messages. So they're often referred to as run to completion tasks. Batch jobs are meant to be created and then they execute a particular operation and then when they're done, they exit. So main takeaway here is unlike applications, batch jobs will not automatically scale. Uh, the number of instances are specified when the job is executed. And aside from not receiving any inbound traffic um, and the mechanism by which they scale, batch jobs are similar to applications um, in all other aspects. Um, so a little bit more about Code Engine and what it can do for you. Um, and then Sub Solution is going to uh, show you how they're utilizing a lot of these um, uh, uh, benefits of using uh, deploying to IBM Cloud with Code Engine. So at a high level, Code Engine is a merging of all of the different and various as a service containerized platforms merged into one. So whether your workload or container is going to be running a function or a service function, um, whether it's there for a platform as a service type of application, uh, web, which is, could be a web app or a 12-factor application, whether you're running a batch job that doesn't respond to HTTP requests, um, or you're responding to HTTP requests uh, like eventing, um, it doesn't matter. As long as you containerize your workload, um, Code Engine can run it for you. Um, and it runs it in the cloud and manages all of the infrastructure behind the scenes for you. Um, Code Engine has a simplified has simplified things to the point where you only need to focus on giving the inputs of what you want to deploy. So, if you give your source code, uh, if that's where you want to start your workflow, or your container image, if that's where you want to start start your workflow, the choice is completely up to you. Um, and then you can just indicate the runtime semantics that you want for those workloads. Um, so if you want to scale based on the load coming in or a certain amount of memory, uh, you have those options as well. Um, so uh, let's talk a little bit about what you can actually do in there. So if you take a look at the blue box, um, uh, Code Engine is a managed platform in the cloud. It will auto scale your workloads for you, as we mentioned. And that means not just the application, but the Kubernetes clusters that are running behind the scenes. So Code Engine will scale those out for you. And you only pay when your applications are actually running. So if everything scales down to zero, um, Code Engine, uh, I'm sorry, uh, you won't receive any charges. Um, Code Engine also supports scaling out based on resource usage. So instead of the number of the requests coming in, Code Engine can scale out 
up or down your applications and workloads based on CPU and memory usage. Uh, there's C, uh, Code Engine also provides built-in security for your applications automatically for you. So when you deploy to Code Engine, you can see in the URL where it says HTTPS. Um, so you don't have to worry about setting up the SSL certificates, managing load balancers, managing the runtime isolation between various workloads running in your cluster. Code Engine will do all of that for you. And finally, unlike other platforms where there's going to be limits in terms of how long your things can run for, how much memory they can use, Code Engine doesn't have any of those limits. So if you want to run something for 12 hours, you can go ahead and do that. If you want to run high memory applications, you can do that as well. Uh, we're not going to stop you. Uh, Code Engine, uh, unlike other platforms, doesn't have any of those artificial limits imposed on you. Um, so if you're interested in getting started with Code Engine, uh, I have a sample of the CLI here. So you can create an application, create an application from a container image. I'm sorry, create a Code Engine project, an application from a container image. You can run the load generator that we have. That's an external tool that will generate, uh, uh, simulate a, a load against your application, create a batch job, and run the batch job in five quick and easy commands. Um, so I have that there as an example, just to show you how easy it is to get up and running. Uh, again, if you would like to get started with Code Engine, you can do that at ibm.biz forward slash cesib one cloud. And you will need to create an IBM Cloud pay as you go account, which as you can see here, you will be using the Code Engine always free tier which is extremely generous. I use it all the time for workshops and demos. Um, I have yet to, to hit any limits of any kind. Um, it allows for up to 100,000 vCPU seconds per month, up to 200,000 gigabyte seconds per month, and up to can accept up to 100,000 incoming HTTP requests per month. And so what we're going to focus on today is uh, our um, um, my favorite code engine use case, uh, which is Sib Solutions. And I'm going to pass things over uh, so that they can talk to you about um, their startup, uh, what they do, uh, any of the question, any uh, uh, some of the challenges that they're facing in the logistics space, um, and then we'll have time for Q and A at the end. <clears throat> Excuse me. And if you have any questions. As we go along, feel free to ask them in the chat. We have people available to answer any and all questions that you have um, about Code Engine and uh, any other questions that might come up. Oh. Things are just getting set up. All right. Okay. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Good. I probably managed to mute myself at the same time. <laughs> That's okay. Unmuted me. Now, let's see here. All right, so, good to go. Yes. So, as uh, Jenna said before, and well, I said as well, Sverir Valgesson is my name, and I am here from SIP Solutions to talk about how we use Code Engine and what we do. So we have a company, and of course, a company always tries to solve some problem. And uh, our problem is a quite interesting one right now. Uh, and it's in logistics. And uh, have you ever ordered anything and not gotten what you were expected? And, or maybe you got something that was broken and then you have to go through all this process of uh, talking to uh, the, uh, the, the store that has to check the warehouse, who don't know who shipped it and, and so forth, so forth. Who, who is to blame? What happened and why did it go wrong? And it, it's quite annoying when that happens. And, now, during the uh, latest, latest years, this has increased a lot to consumer, but this has been existing for quite a long time also between different uh, 
companies as well. Uh, so uh, it's a big problem, all the problems that can appear in logistics. And really, if you look at the logistics chain, actually, it's amazing that it works as well as it does. There are endless amount, uh, number of uh, areas that can go wrong. You have the manufacturing, you have to transport it to a warehouse and then to another warehouse, probably you transport it again, you transport it to some kind of hubs, you package it, uh, well, pick, pack it, and then you have to send it to the consumer and then it's the last mile delivery and then you get something. And often we actually get what we wanted, but pretty often that doesn't happen. So we uh, were a few people that thought, well, this we can solve and we can do that with tech, of course. What problem can you not solve with technology? Uh, so uh, there is a company since 2017 called Sib Solutions that uh, has a long experience within logistics and then also quite long from technology. And uh, we are growing. We are over 20 people today. And we are based in southern Sweden in a town, university town of Lund. And uh, what we do to solve this, or to help solving this, are multiple things. We try to assist and guide the operators in the warehouses to pick the right things and put them in the right places. So they have a list to follow and they are trying to put uh, the correct number of shampoo bottles into the correct box. And there's a bunch of boxes in front of them. As you see here on the picture is a typical use case. This is uh, bottle picking. Uh, and this is trying to pick bottles for different customers. And they're of course having different sorts of stuff that has to be delivered. And we're, we then guide the operator by showing them where they should put the different things with uh, AR, with overlay on the screen here. And then we also, as you see on this picture down to the left, show the operator if something is missing here, you're probably making a mis mistake here. And we try to help the operator by nudging, nudging them. Uh, what's, what should be here? And what are you doing? And is it right or is it wrong? Uh, and we also, of course, since these are cameras, these are pictures, we are seeing these things. We can save what's happening so that if something happens, if something goes wrong, we can check in hindsight. So if you get the wrong thing and you ordered yellow socks and you got red socks, you can order, you can call them and they can check in their system. Yeah, sorry, we packed the wrong socks. So they can send you the correct ones and there is no problem with it. They can see that immediately in the, in the film. We can find it. We uh, can search the film for your package and you will get your answer, answer immediately from their, uh, from their customer service. And, and the warehouses are always the ones to blame when it comes to these things. They are taking the blame for a lot of things. Uh, I talked to, uh, I talked to a, a warehouse operator recently that had just handled a call that there was a, a full pallet of shampoo bottles that had been delivered upside down. And he couldn't pro prove that they hadn't loaded it on the truck upside down. So they were there in the dispute. How do we handle that? If they would have a picture of them loading the truck, loading these shampoo bottles, of course they didn't load them upside down. Why would they do that? But um, they have no proof. We have the system that will provide that proof and very easily. They don't have to go and search through hours and hours of video data. We can find it for them immediately. So, and this is also used to improve internal processes. And, and this is, we are both showing the video feed, we're getting that and interpreting it, and we are marrying that with a lot of other data from the warehouse management systems or ERP systems, scanning, positional data, and so forth. And putting it all together, we can see everything. 
and I of course understand that mostly the technical stuff about this is the really important ones here. And if you look at it from the cloud view here, you see that in each warehouse we have lots of cameras. For every station we can have one, we can have more. And all of them are using the IBM event streams, which is uh, Kafka communication, to send information to our smart assistant in the cloud. Our smart assistant will then, using standard open source services, we use MongoDB, we use Redis, we use HD um, for handling the data. But we are then interpreting all this data that is sent from the edge to us in the cloud and interpreting what is actually happening in every station at any given moment. At the same time, we are getting the data from their VMS systems, and then we can see what should be happening. And then we provide, using web services, we provide then a UI to the user so that, or the operator so that they can see what's happening or how, how we interpret the scene and what they should be doing. So, and this is all running then, all the uh, logic there, all the processors in this picture are run on Code Engine. So we, there's also a lot of infrastructure around this. We have to update the edge devices. We have to handle, of course, AI models in different versions that have to be served. All of that is placed in the Code Engine. Very easy for us to manage. So, when we build this, we are very much focused on letting our engineers focus on problems that are not solved already. And here, open source is, of course, our big savior. A lot of problems are solved. Configurations, easy to manage in HD. MongoDB is great. Kafka is fantastic for sending messages, so is MQTT. Uh, Reddit for caching, and Kubernetes for scaling, all that is great. We don't have to invent any of that. Uh, we don't want to run any of that either. We are very happy not doing that, but I'll come to that in a sec. But we want to be building new things. And as you understand, that's a lot of the AI stuff and using all this data to provide good feedback to the user. And to be able to do this, because this is quite hard, the AI is hard. The, uh, the communication with the user is quite hard to do. And uh, microservices, as we use for this, it's kind of hard to. Uh, but everything is a Docker. Really, everything we do is a Docker. And that makes that we can use whatever language or framework we need to solve a specific task. So. For AI tasks, we typically use Python, as many others do. Uh, but when we need higher performance, we can use Go. We use .NET Core for some other things. And it also depends a little bit on who you are as a person, what you like to use. We believe that we don't have to lock down people into using some tech they don't want to use. If they can find something they like and can get the job done, then that's fine. Uh, so. Uh, so since we can use everything as a Docker, really the language and the tool chain isn't that big of a deal. So we can do anything here. And we use all these frameworks that we mentioned here, like, well, we use anything from Django, for example, for, well, it's really good at what it does. Uh, and of course, OpenCV and TensorFlow. And we try to optimize in architecture. So we don't really, it doesn't really matter that we're using Python in some areas. It's not that fast, but it does the job. And then we can just use code engine to scale it out when we need to. Uh, so it's not a problem. And oops, there. And and then this is why we're using, let's see here. I didn't miss anything now. Uh, and this is why we're using IBM here. Uh, we really love that that's the, the products that we're using there are the actual open source projects, but they're provided to us as a service. Uh, this is not a, when we're using Code Engine, it's not a simulated version of Kubernetes. It is Kubernetes. When we're using 
their event streams is not a simulated version of Kafka. It is actual Kafka. It's actual Kafka code being run. So the same limitations apply. And I can get help on Stack Overflow if I need to. And also, when I hire somebody, they know it. They know how to use these things. Uh, so there's no lock-in, but I don't have to run these services. And the code engine is extremely easy to set up and use. Anyone in our team can use it. Uh, also, the operations department can use it, go in and look at it. They are not developers. They have no problem looking at what's happening there to check a log or something. Our testers have no problem with it. A developer does not have to help if you have to change some settings and stuff like that. Not an issue. They can do that. Uh, we have a very clear overview of what's using, uh, what's running. The logging is great. And the best thing here is that, well, as long as it's a Docker, it will handle it. We can just package it up and deliver it, and it will run. And also, uh, anyone who has used the service that I'm describing like this, that it's very easy to use, of course, there are trade-offs. But I can drop down to the command line and use kube control if I want to. I rather, though, not. But I can. And that's a very reassuring thing to know. And then there is the little, little issue of security as well, of course. So we are a small team. We are not very many developers, and we are concentrating on our service. And uh, IBM are a bit more people than we are. And they can put uh, quite a lot of resources into keeping all these services secure. So they have people, of course, keeping the Kafka services secure, the Kubernetes services secure, and so forth. Also, there are very sensible defaults. Everything just kind of works out of the box and is secure out of the box. So we just have to concentrate on securing our part of the service. And we know that the infrastructure is taken care of. And then that uh, the very neat thing about the certificates being automatically handled by IBM here, uh, that's uh, a very nice plus. It's a luxury. Not that certificates are very hard to handle, but they are a distraction, and we prefer not to be handling them. So that's handled automatically, and we can just trust that these things work. And that's great. So all of this, it works for us. We have quite many customers, and we are getting more by the day and deploying our products all over. And uh, there I leave it to you, Jenna. Thank you so much. Fantastic. So uh, Q&A is next. Um, so I was just posting in the chat. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to um, feel free to post your, your questions in the chat. There's also a spot that says ask a question at the bottom. So feel free to uh, ask a question there as well. So um, I will share this as well. Someone had asked, um, can we get SubSolutions website? So I'm going to share with everyone in the chat as well. Um, if you're interested in learning more uh, about SubSolutions, here's a link to their website in the chat. Um, so we uh, have some questions for Q&A as well. So if any come up as we are uh, asking questions, like I said, feel free to, to post it in the chat um, and we will make sure that we get all of your questions answered. So the first question that I have is, <clears throat> what are the biggest challenges you faced in being in the logistics space and how have these changed since, since COVID? Well, the biggest challenges are the, uh, should we say the, uh the volumes and the, the, the speed of change. Uh, people are demanding things faster and faster and faster. And uh, it's not many years ago where uh, an order could come to a warehouse, nobody was in a real hurry, you could pick that and then you could pack it the day after and then send it away and nobody expected anything. And it, it could take a week, it was fine. Um, now, 
two days is a long time. Uh, when you have pressed the order on the website, you expect your things to be packed within an hour and then sent pretty soon after that. So the speeds are uh, a big thing here that, um, and, and the efficiency in the warehouses. So um, yeah, as you said, right in the chat, you have same day delivery. And, and, and that means uh, a huge stress on the systems in the logistics flow and on the people there as well. So they have to be super fast doing all these things. Yeah, you might think that a lot of things are automated in the warehouses and a lot of things are automated, but there are a lot of people doing a lot of things. And uh, that's one of the biggest challenges is of course, the volumes and the increase in volumes and predicting the volumes, which is really hard to do. And Code Engine helps us a lot there because, well, we don't have to really predict it. We just have to have the service there ready to go. And if a warehouse gets a lot to do, then Code Engine will start a new server for us or a new image and run it for us. It's serverless from our point of view. We don't know how many servers they're running and we don't really care. They give us the CPUs we need. Um, so I guess you, you kind of started to answer my next question, which is, uh, what made you initially choose IBM cloud code engine as the best fit for your startup? Um, well, that was, um, I was, uh, I was using another service and I was discussing with, uh, IBM architect, uh, uh, how I would solve my problems with IBM. And I was actually saying that I, I just want you to take my dockers and run them. I don't want anything more with it. And then he told me that, well, there is, there is this little project that we're doing here internally. Maybe we can let you try it out, which then became code engine in the end. And, uh, we got to try that out and that was exactly what I was asking for. Uh, so that's how we ended up there. Uh, we, didn't want all the ceremony of running the dockers. We just wanted to run the dockers. So what have been the uh, biggest challenges in using other cloud providers? Well, for, for us, other cloud providers, it, the complications um, that now I am um, using, um, if I'm running a web service, I have to use this service from the custom from from that vendor if i want to run a batch job it's another service if i want to run a, just a function it's another service i mean um it, it's complicated and and if i want to have um i ended up in if i have have a web service that needs a lot of cpu then i had to change somewhere in subscriptions and stuff like that i couldn't change that at the web service they were sharing resources in some strange way very hard to understand what i'm actually doing uh, but, uh, and, and here it's very straightforward for each application. I can say how much res resources it should be limited to and then off I go and it's straight off. I, I don't have to make it more complicated and, and it will just run my stuff. Uh, it, it's not very picky on what I'm running it, as long as it has a Docker, it runs it. <clears throat> um. So I, I wanted to ask what feature or features of Code Engine have had the biggest impact on your business and why? Well, definitely the ease of use, I would say. Um, that we don't have to have people that are specialized in Code Engine helping other people running it or setting things up or anything like that. And everyone in the team can just go on to cloud.ibm.com and then click their way through. And even if they haven't used it before, they figure it out very easily. So we can concentrate on just getting the job done. And that's great. Uh, so uh, I think that's the biggest one, actually. We are very resource constrained. So having people doing, ha having people handling the infrastructure is not a luxury we have. Yeah, so as a startup with limited resources and limited uh, hands on deck, um, it probably makes it a lot easier to have uh, deployment uh, options where you don't necessarily, like you said, you don't need to hire someone who has a certification in Kubernetes or is a container expert. Um, 
exactly and 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 I, there are test cases for example that are uh, start this service but change this setting to that uh, and 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 the testers can just do that they don't have to have mm. help from anyone we don't have to have special code to enable that to happen it right. they can just click their way through and do it right like so for instance i worked on the <clears throat> ibm cloud uh file block team working on redesigning the IBM cloud portal. And uh, we had so many different teams for so many different things and we'd have to pass things off for testing. And um, there's a lot of things that we uh, were not able to do ourselves um, or we'd have to wait to hear back from certain things. So uh, I'm sure it speeds up uh, how quickly you're able to get things done and, and not have anyone uh, blocking someone else from doing what they need to do. Exactly. Um, so I wanted to ask, uh, so uh, to all of you that are watching, um, we are going to tomorrow get hands-on with Code Engine. Uh, for those of you that mentioned um, uh, that you are using Python day-to-day, -day, that's perfect uh, because tomorrow we are going to be um, showing you how to create a uh, live stream applic application with Python and Kafka uh, using Code Engine. Um, so, uh, in preparation for tomorrow, uh, how are you using Kafka with Code Engine? And why has Code Engine been the better choice for using Kafka? Well, it, it, the Code Engine's Kafka integration is, well, or using Kafka is just, as I said before, with that, that Code Engine doesn't care what I'm doing, uh, really. So it's, it's I can run the same container there as I do on my local machine. And when I'm um, developing or tr using Kafka streams, I can go, I can uh, send up a, a batch job that's an endless batch job, uh, basically that never never ends that's listening to the kafka streams and that will uh, take care of what's happening there for example so uh, that's a great way of working with it um, there are other ways to work with kafka there you have great flexibility also in code engine in some areas uh, where you can connect it to the event sources as well so um, we're looking forward to uh, using that also which we don't do today but uh, we will um, and then the last question I have is what has kept IBM Cloud Code Engine as your uh, top choice and best fit um, in uh, uh, deployment options for your startups um, product? What has kept it there? Um, well, it's the ease of use definitely. And well, the, the support team, I would say. Uh, it's very easy to get the, the few questions I've had. They are very easy to get an answer to, and uh, and uh, there's very responsive on on questions. So uh, those things, the ease of use, definitely. I will come back to it over and over again. Uh, so uh, I mean, it it just works. It just runs the dockers, and it is there is no no surprises. Really, it works exactly like, like you expect it to work. And that's great. We don't want surprises, not there. <laughs> we have plenty of others. <laughs> so I'm sure there's new surprises every day. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to uh, share or mention um, before we kind of wrap things up? No, not really. I. Looking forward to see as many as possible tomorrow. Very good. Well, thank you very much for being here today. And um, we will uh, get more in depth and hands on tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> so to all of you uh, that are watching, uh, feel free to join tomorrow. So first of all, thank you all so much for coming. Um, as I mentioned, tomorrow we are going to get hands on uh, with Sib Solutions. Um, and uh, IBM Code Engine, we're going to be uh, working with Python and Kafka and IBM Event Streams and Code Engine. So we're going to build some some really fun and uh, a really fun uh, application for you and um, 
walk you through how to get it set up, how to get it deployed, um, show you some really cool things about the code, uh, teach you a little bit about Kafka uh, producers and consumers. Um, and uh, with Sib Solutions being in Sweden, we'll show you how easy it is to actually work cross-functionally uh, across global teams as well. So we'll be actually um, working together. Uh, I'll be in Detroit, uh, they'll be in Sweden, um, and we'll be uh, working together and, and getting things uh, uh, demoed for you together tomorrow. Um, so I just posted in the chat, it is a very quick two question survey. I always recommend people put in there anything that they'd like to see. Uh, what type of applications would you like to see us build? What, what tech stacks would you like to see um, sample applications and demos in? Um, what types of workshops do you wanna see? What type of IBM Cloud integrations do you wanna see um, working with Code Engine? So feel free to share. Um, I'm always looking to uh, see how we can create a new and better sample application, new tutorial, something uh, new, fresh, and exciting for all of you. Uh, to not only uh, build, but to take away and use to build your own applications, whether it be for a hackathon or maybe you're starting your own startup uh, or maybe you're working on your portfolio website and you want to use a fresh tech stack. So that is tomorrow. So uh, again, I'll post everything in the chat as well. Um, so <clears throat> tomorrow, same time, same place, we will be doing part two, the hands-on portion of the workshop list here for all of you. There we go. Um, so I highly encourage you to join. Um, <clears throat> if for whatever reason uh, you can't, um, uh, as I mentioned before, everything is being live stream recorded. Um, so you can always, uh, always make sure to sign up and um, uh, you'll be able to watch the uh, playback later. Um, but you'll have an opportunity joining live to ask questions to myself and Sub Solutions as well as we go along. Um, any technical questions, any any issues that you may have, or things you may be interested in wondering about. <clears throat> um, so if you'd like to stay connected with us as well, feel free. You can always reach out and ask questions on LinkedIn. Um, and I would like to uh, thank you all so much for coming. As always, I have the event resources and certifications at the end here. Uh, you can always connect with us on any of our IBM developer social channels. Um, and to end the time together we're spend, we've spent here today, um, but not to worry because we are going to see you all again tomorrow. So excited. I'd like to wish you all a very wonderful Wednesday. And um, I'm going to take you out with a little song. So thank you all tomorrow. Uh, thank you, Sib Solutions. And we will be back here tomorrow. So have a great day. My life unfurled at a time when geeks like me can change the world. There's a hackathon tonight, and if it works out all right, I can improve society. Oh, yeah, improve society. But a VC will be there with money in his wallet. If I pitch him like a boss, I could get funding for my project. Seven figure summer, I'll be crushing everyone at the hackathon. At the hackathon tonight. There are prizes up for grabs if I can get paid. My phone is six months old, you know I need to upgrade. I can surely win some gadgets if I sweet talk with the judges at the hackathon tonight. At the hackathon tonight.